Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a deep dive analysis on the LPB1 booster. It's a simple single transistor boost style circuit. It's as old as the hills dating back to probably the 50s or 60s or even sooner. It's about as simple and straightforward as you can get, but uh, something worth experimenting with. And what I've got in front of you here is a pretty, is a modified version of that circuit, but I put something up on my breadboard and I just wanted to test it out. So I want to walk you through what I've got here, what I'm testing, and then you'll hear the sound clips. So first of all, let's try to understand what each of the components are doing in the circuit. Our input comes in here. We run into an input capacitor. Now, this capacitor is a coupling capacitor. As you can see, we've got a 9 volt power source up here. There's a resistor here, resistor here, and a transistor, but there is direct current in this area of the circuit, and you really don't want that extending further back in this direction. You know, if that direct current continues this way to the input, it'll go into the guitar. And you really don't want that. You want to be blocking that out. So the capacitor helps to couple that, to decouple that. I mean, it you know blocks direct current so only your alternating current will pass through this capacitor it'll also provide some tone shaping now I use 0.22 UF that's just because that was the value that I had on hand um, I think 0.1 is also pretty common but um, the idea is that the larger value capacitor you use so if you use like 1 UF 25 UF those are larger values that is going to let in more base frequencies Whereas if you use a smaller value capacitor, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, etc., you're going to actually be trimming away some of those low-end frequencies. Uh, so you can tighten it up a little bit here. Now, with 0.22, it's pretty much full frequency. Uh, it might be shaving off something you know, around 50, 60, 70 hertz, which is um, really low-end for guitar, so it's not really a problem for me. So I want it I, that does not bother me one bit in fact i like that tiny little bit of of base shaping um but it's it's a very small amount but you know if you can use this pedal with a base you may want to reconsider that and use larger coupling capacitors and, th and that would be here at c2 and also here at c1 same difference next we come to the emitter of the transistor now i tested two different transistors first I started with a 2n3904 and then second, I used a 2N5088. My understanding is that the 5, 3904 is more of a medium gain transistor, whereas the 5088 is a higher gain transistor. So that's what I'm going to ultimately go with in the end. But I just wanted to hear and see if I could test or hear that, uh, that difference in output volume. But at the base, this is this middle lug here, we've got two resistors, and they are bringing in 9 volts from the power supply and then forming a voltage re, uh, a voltage divider at this point. So it's helping to bias the transistor by providing that steady base current that the, uh, that, the, that the guitar signal will interact with in creating the amplification. This 390 ohm resistor on the collector also helps to bias uh, the, the exit of the the flow of current through the transistor to into ground, as well as the 10K, which is providing our uh, bias resistor here to the collector. So these four resistors help to form the bias of the circuit so that the transistor doesn't just run off, that it operates more at a kind of a moderate level that you're getting even bias and output. They could be tweaked slightly to your taste, um, but I believe that uh, this is a pretty solid and straightforward way to bias this transistor so that it functions well. Notice as well that we don't have any kind of uh, attenuation on the input. So basically, whatever signal goes into this thing is being amplified kind of to its maximum value. Sometimes I've also seen people put a volume control at this stage of the circuit. Now, by my opinion, you might as well just use the volume on your guitar which would be from your input, so it doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. Uh, but that's uh, if you ever get any clipping from the amp itself, because you are running it kind of at maximum volume, maximum gain, uh, this could be a spot to do a little bit of attenuation. 
talked about our other coupling capacitor here again so that our output doesn't contain any of this direct current from the battery or from the power supply. Now next, for much of the test I just run straight out to the output from this point. But I've got two additional components that are optional. And I'm going to go backwards. This is first would be a volume control. So one of the, for much of the testing, like I said, I just go straight out. And what I want to hear is how does this circuit sound at full maximum gain? How much output does it have? And, and ultimately, I'm using it with a tube amp. So I want to hear how does it sound pushing that first gain stage. So you're probably going to hear some distortion that is being resulted from this circuit pushing the the tu first tube gain stage in my tube amplifier. I mean, you're running into a super reverb. And so, you know, that's kind of one of the things, the primary things that I would, you would use with this kind of a circuit is to push that input gain stage in your amp into distortion. But then I also am testing a volume control to help you kind of attenuate that a little bit. And then also putting some clipping diodes here. So now we're going from an LPV1 into more of an electro distortion world. Um, the clipping diodes will reduce the overall output because they're going to clip the peaks that passes the forward voltage point. And if you want to learn more about diodes, check I've got another video on my channel that can help provide greater detail on that. But basically I'm running three diodes in an asymmetrical clipping setup. So just testing what that sounds like. And then um, I think towards the end of the test I've, I've got the clipping diodes and I turned down the volume a little bit. So then you really hear what the amp sounds like clean but with the dry the over this overdrive circuit and the boost circuit providing the clipping not from the amp so just another uh, tone difference so let's go ahead and jump into the clips now and hope you guys enjoy what this sounds like okay this is just the guitar going straight into an amp it's kind of a fender super reverb style amp head Now we've got the LPB1 boost in line, max volume. This is a 2N3904 capacitor. Uh, this is the 2N3904 transistor. Now we got the 2N5088. This is the 2N5088 transistor, and I've got um, three clipping diodes in an asymmetric setup on the right before the vol the output of the volume control. So I'm just providing a little bit of hard clipping.
Okay, now I've got the volume turned down, so I'm not pushing the tubes as much, and pretty much all the drive is coming from the pedal. This is just with the clipping diodes out, same settings. Mm -hmm. 